Hi friends, welcome to this class on reflection and refraction of light. We are going to be discussing some really interesting and important questions. So be sure to watch the entire class and I'm going to make the concepts crystal clear for you. So guys, are you ready for this quiz? And before we begin, I'd like to say do check out our website manochaacademy.com. We've got these uh, courses there for you on physics, chemistry and soon we'll be launching the maths courses. We have interactive videos and special live classes also that you can attend, quizzes and questions and you get direct replies from me. So guys, do check out these courses on uh, CBSE and ICSE boards. We have these. So please take a look. I'll put the links below. And guys, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel already, please hit the subscribe button right now and click on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of these live classes or new videos that we upload. And from the Manocha Academy team, I really want to say a big thanks to all of you for all your love and support. So do keep watching our videos and please share it out with your friends. And great to see a lot of folks out here in the chat. So welcome everyone. Are you ready and excited for this quiz on reflection and refraction of light? So let's get started. Here's our first question. What is the nature of the image formed in a concave lens? Okay, and guys, as you can see in the picture here, this is a concave lens, right? So we have the concave lens here. So can you tell me what is the nature of the image formed here? So come on guys, in this concave lens. All right, so I want everybody to try. Okay, so I see a lot of answers here. So what do you think is the answer guys? Very good. You're saying the correct answer is C, right? So we have, this is our correct answer here. The option number C because it's a virtual and diminished image. Excellent guys. So what is, uh, why is that? Because you know, a concave lens always forms a virtual and diminished image, right? Uh, so if you uh, draw the ray diagram guys, you know what happens? So let's say here's our object here. So we have our object here, okay? And what will the light rays look like for this object? So we know that this ray is going to go and hit the lens and it's going to diverge out, right? And then you have the other ray here. Oops. Uh, so we are going to have this other ray, which is going to go straight, right? Through the optical center. Okay. So right guys, and if we trace back this ray out here, so if we trace it back out here, we are going to get the image is going to be formed in this location, right? So if you draw the principal axis here, your image is going to be formed somewhere here. Can you see that? So this at this intersection. Okay, so the correct answer is virtual and diminished image. Very good. Let's take a look at our next question. What can be the magnification of a convex mirror? Can it be 0.25, minus 0.25, 1 or 1.25? So guys, what do you think is the correct answer out of these options here? So come on, I want all of you to try. Okay guys, please go ahead and try this. So what can be the magnification of a convex mirror? Very good, I'm seeing answers out here. So. Excellent guys, I want all of you to try this question. Please go ahead and give it a shot. So what do you think is the answer here? What can be the magnification of a convex mirror? And do you see this convex mirror in the picture here? So what is the magnification going to be? Okay, so I see some answers. Some people are saying B, C, D. Uh, what do you think is uh, going to be the thing here? So magnification of a convex mirror. Can you see in this picture, this convex mirror, can you see that the car is a diminished image? Can you see that small image of the car, right? So a, a convex mirror, you know, always gives a diminished image, right? So the magnification is basically going to be 
less than one, right? Because the image height is basically less than the object height, right? So it's gonna be, uh, either it's gonna be 0.25 or minus 0.25. So which option should it be, A or B? What do you guys think? Okay, so some are saying A, some are saying B. So guys, magnification, you know the magnification formula, right? So what is the magnification formula, guys? Magnification is image height by the object height, right? Image height by object height. And we know that this magnification is going to be less than one because a convex mirror always produces a diminished image. Okay. So some of you are saying minus 0.25. Guys, be careful here. The negative sign here. Can you see the negative sign? The negative sign means it's a inverted image. So what is the difference between magnification of 0.25 and minus 0.25? Minus means it's an inverted image. And we know a convex mirror gives a diminished, but a virtual and upright image. It's not real and inverted. So very good guys. The correct answer is gonna be the magnification of this convex mirror is gonna be 0.25, okay? So the correct answer is A because it needs to be a positive value, it's an upright image and it's diminished. So the right answer guys is option number A here, okay? So the correct answer is option A, all right? Very good, let's go on to our next question. Find the angle of reflection for the case below. So come on guys, I want all of you to try this. What do you think is gonna be the angle of reflection for this mirror? And can you see that we have a convex mirror out here, right? So what do you think is gonna be the angle of reflection here? Is it gonna be zero, 30, 60, 90? Come on, I want everybody to participate and try this questions, okay? So carefully look, where is the ray going here guys? Can you see that the ray is incident on the convex mirror like this and it's directed towards the uh, center of curvature. And we have this angle, can you see? This angle here is 30 degree, right? So what do you think is gonna be the angle of reflection for the case below? So some of you are saying 30, okay? So guys, uh, let me give you a hint. When the ray of light is directed towards the center of curvature, okay, where do you think the ray goes? So when a ray of light is directed towards the center of curvature, guys, where should it go? Can you tell me? Okay, now I see some change of answers because you know that when it's going towards the center of curvature, it should get reflected back, right? So the ray of light is going to basically get reflected back here. Let me draw the arrow again. So the ray of light is going to get reflected back along the same path. Very good. So because you know when it is incident on the, towards the center of curvature, it is normal, right? It's like a normal. So it gets reflected back along the same path. So what will be the angle of incidence? Because it's along the normal guys, what should be the angle of incidence? Very good, the angle of incidence. So basically we'll have angle of incidence I, the angle of incidence here. So angle of incidence I is gonna be, so angle of incidence I will be zero degrees. So therefore we can say angle of reflection also is gonna be, so similarly, the angle of reflection also will be zero degrees, right, okay? So the correct answer is option A. Very good, very good. So those of you who got it right, the right answer is option A here. Okay, so that is our correct answer. Clear? Because it's along the normal. Excellent. Now let's take a look at our next question. Speed of light in a material is two times 10 to the power eight meter per second. What is the absolute refractive index of the material? So guys, go ahead and try this question. What is it given? Speed of light in a material is two times 10 to the power eight meter per second. So what do you think is gonna be the absolute refractive index of the material? So guys, what do you think is the answer here? Come on, I want all of you to try this question. Okay, very good. I see some answers here. Excellent guys, awesome to see you guys trying. So what is the formula here? Come on, think and tell me. 
So we know that what is first of all what is absolute refractive index? Okay, so absolute refractive index means you're comparing the uh, So what are you doing here in absolute refractive index? What is the formula? It's basically absolute refractive index is the speed of light in vacuum which is C divided by the speed of light in the medium right so it's basically the formula is C by V where C is the speed of light in vacuum right so speed of light in vacuum and uh, V is the sp uh, speed of light in the material okay and guys what is the speed of light in vacuum come on tell me so what is the value of C so C you know is 3 times 10 to the power 8 meter per second okay so you guys know that right and the velocity in the medium is given as or the speed of velocity is given as 2 into 10 to the power 8 so if you divide those two numbers what are you going to get so uh, v we have here is so v is basically 2 times 10 to the power 8 meter per second right right guys so if we divide these numbers what do we get excellent superb so if you divide these two the unit is going to cancel so the correct answer guys what is the correct answer so this refractive index which is denoted by this eta symbol right it looks like an n is going to turn out to be 1.5 so if you divide these numbers okay because you're doing 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second by 2 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second superb so the correct answer here guys is option number b so option b is our right answer here very good okay so the key uh, concept here was absolute refractive index means comparing the speed of light in vacuum or roughly speaking air so 3 to 10 to the power 8 meter per second by 2 to 10 to the power 8 meter per second and you get the right answer okay guys great now let's take a look at the next question for an object of height 1 centimeter a convex lens gives an image of height 2 centimeter if the object distance is 5 centimeter find the image distance so come on guys try this question so i want all of you to try it okay guys so go ahead and try this question come on everybody so what do you think is the answer here so you're, what are you given? Please take a look at the question carefully. You're given the object height is 1 centimeter, right? And you have a convex lens which gives an image of height 2 centimeter. Now if the object distance is 5, we need to find the image distance. So first let's clearly write down the data here. So what is the data we have? That the object height h, right? So the object height h is equal to 1 centimeter, right? And it's giving us an image of height uh, so the image height here so image height h dash is 2 centimeter right okay so that's the object and image height and the object distance is given as so we have the object distance here so which is basically u so u is given to us as 5 centimeter and we need to find the image distance so that's what we need to calculate here right guys so we need to find our image distance here so what do you think is the answer going to be so how do we calculate this question so first clearly write down the data as we've written it here and how do we solve this question so come on i want all of you to think okay very good i see some answers here so what is the uh, main trick here guys we are going to use the magnification formula so magnification you know is basically image height h dash by the object height h right so everybody knows that and we know that this image height by object height is basically equal to v by u so for a lens we need to use this formula right so magnification has two things so magnification is image height by object height and that's equal to v by u so now if you substitute the numbers what do you get so let's go ahead and substitute our numbers here right so let's try to substitute the numbers here and what are we getting guys so please try so if you substitute okay i think the uh, pen is uh, behaving a little uh, strangely here because uh, there's some shift in the writing uh, don't worry so let's go ahead and try this 
So h dash by h, so if you substitute it's 2 by 1, it's equal to v by u. So if you just go ahead and solve that equation, what do we get? The image distance is going to turn out to be, so our image distance v, right? The image distance v is going to turn out to be 10 centimeters. Right, guys? So go ahead and substitute the values here. So 2 by 1, and very good. Those of you who got the right answer, the answer is option number C here, right? So this is the correct option. Very good, very good. I see uh, Angshuman Gupta, right? Ajay Reddy, you have the right answer. Uh, Shashank Kulkarni, very good. So this is the right answer here, and you just need to apply the uh, uh, formula for lenses. So magnification is H dash by H, which is also equal to image uh, distance by object distance. Excellent. Clear? Now let's try this question. What is used in a magnifying glass? Okay, so what do you think is used in a magnifying glass? A convex mirror, a concave mirror, a convex lens, or a concave lens? So guys, what do you think is the right answer here? So come on, try it. Okay. So very good, I see. So a hint is, think about Detective Sherlock Holmes, right? or what the detectives use as a magnifying glass to magnify the image. So magnifying glass means it's basically a magnifying lens. Okay, so the correct answer is it's not going to be mirrors, right? Because the glass here is basically means we are talking about a magnifying lens here, right? So we are talking about a magnifying lens, like the ones used by detectives to magnify the thing. And which lens uh, gives you a magnified image? Is it convex or concave? What do you guys think here? So which one gives you a magnified image? Excellent guys. I see a lot of you have written the correct answer. The correct answer is basically option C here. Right? So the correct answer is option C, convex lens. Yeah, Sherlock Holmes, right? So think of the detective. So magnifying glass means magnifying lens. So don't think you can use a a concave mirror because here we are talking about the lens so very good the right answer is going to be convex lens because a convex lens you know can give a magnified image when you bring the object really close when the object is between the optical center and the focus excellent guys so guys uh, now let's try this question how are the incident and emergent ray related for a parallel glass block uh, for a rectangular glass block sorry so if you have this rectangular glass block which has these parallel edges that you see here, how are the incident ray and the emergent ray, so the ray that emerges out related? Is it option A parallel, B opposite directions, C 90 degree to each other or D none of these? So guys, what do you think? So come on, try this question. All of you. So what, how do you think that these are related? The incident ray and emergent ray. And I want everybody to try. And guys, if you haven't hit the like button, please hit the like button right now and do share out our uh, videos with your friends so that we can have more people joining us on these classes. So it's awesome to see all of you here. And I see a lot of folks are here. So I want to see more likes. Come on, guys, please hit the like button and try this question. Okay, very good. I'm seeing some answers, right? So please go ahead and try. What do you think? Can you see this ray of light which is incident on the parallel glass block? What is going to happen here? So let's try. So what do you think is going to happen here, guys? So it's incident on this glass block and it's going to bend basically towards the normal, right? We know that the light ray is going to bend towards the normal. Okay, oops. Uh, I think my tablet and marker is uh, behaving a bit strange today, so don't worry, I'll have it fixed in the next live class, but let's try that again, right? So, because it's not uh, pointing in the right position, right? So let's go ahead and try that again. But basically, uh, let me show it to you using the pointer. So what happens here, guys, uh, when this light ray is going from air to glass, can you see? It's going from air to glass, it's going to basically bend towards the normal. Okay, so this light ray is basically going to bend towards the normal and when it's going from glass to air, it's going to bend away from the normal. Okay, so remember the diagram. So the light ray is basically going to first bend towards the normal. So let me try to draw that here. Okay, so 
Okay, so here's the light ray and this bends towards the normal here and then when it comes out, it's basically going to bend away from the normal. Okay, so that's a rough drawing I've tried to do with this uh, issue with the pen, right? So can you guys see that? So here are the ray is bending towards the normal and then it's away from the normal. And this ray that comes out is called the emergent ray. Okay, so just excuse my rough drawing. And basically, if you uh, draw it properly, this incident ray and emergent ray are basically going to be parallel. And you can watch my previous video on that on refraction of light. We discussed it because of the angles, the incident and emergent ray are parallel to each other. So the emergent ray that comes out is parallel to the incident ray. And so the correct answer here, guys, is going to be option number. So the right answer is option number A, that the rays are basically parallel to each other. Very good. So a lot of you got it right. And if you didn't get it right, go and check the uh, rectangular glass block diagram. So guys, if you're confused, this ray is called the incident ray. The ray within the glass block is called the refracted ray. And the ray that finally comes out is called the emergent ray. Okay. And so the emergent ray, even though this diagram is rough, it's not looking exactly parallel. But believe me, the emergent ray is going to be parallel to the incident ray because of the correct angles. Okay. So very good, guys. Excellent. Let's move on to our next question. A concave lens has a focal length of 25 centimeters. So do you see the concave lens in the picture here, guys? So this is our concave lens. What is the power of the lens? So what do you guys think is going to be the power of the lens? So basically in this question, you need to apply the power formula correctly. And you know, right, that when you go to the optician, right, the uh, optician uh, gives you the power, right? Like for example, I'm wearing spectacles, right? So uh, the lenses have a certain power. So this is basically, we say, what is the power of the lens, right? So how much it can converge the ray? It's converging or diverging power in the case of concave lens. Okay, so some of you are saying, okay, what is power? Let's discuss the formula. So what is the formula of power, guys? So do you guys know? Uh, so the power formula is basically, power is defined as, so one way to define it is one by focal length in meters. Okay, or another way to define it as, it is also, so we can say power is basically, so power is basically 100 by the focal length in centimeters okay so these are the two formulas of power and what is power basically telling us the converging or diverging power of a lens okay so how much can a con convex lens you know is a converging lens so how much it can converge the light rays and a concave lens like the one in this diagram how much it can diverge it okay so now apply this formula and let's see if you can calculate what will be the power of the lens so the basic first formula, the formulas are the same, but the first one is where you use focal length in meters. Remember, uh, SI unit is meters. So it's simply the reciprocal of the focal length in meter, or if you like to use the focal length in centimeter, then you should do 100 by F in centimeter, right? Because that conversion has a uh, 100 factor in it. Okay, so guys, if the focal length has uh, given as 25 centimeters, so come on, simple, please go ahead and calculate the power. No, some of you are writing 23, guys, it's 25. Look at the question here. It's not 100 by 23, 25, right? Okay, very good. So a lot of you have calculated and you're saying that the power is basically four diopter, but we have, so capital D stands for, so this word uh, D, uh, the capital D here, right? So capital D basically stands for diopter, the SI unit of power, and the spelling is diopter. Right? I think the American spelling is with T-E-R, but we are using the, uh, the other British spelling, right? Diopter. Okay, so is it going to be this option, 4 diopter or minus 4 diopter? What do you guys think? Okay, so guys, uh, please remember, you must be knowing this, that uh, uh, right? if you wear spectacles, you know, the doctor gives you either a plus power or a minus power, right? You've heard this, like you tell, uh, if somebody asks you what's your power, you say, oh, my power is minus two, or my power is minus three, or somebody says my power is plus two, okay? So power has a sign, guys. Be very careful. This power of a lens has a sign, okay? And the important thing, guys, I want you to remember from this class, convex lens. So let's write it down clearly here. So a convex lens 
has positive power. Okay, convex lens has positive power and a concave lens. Okay, guys, has negative power. Please remember that. And that's due to sign convention because the focal length, right? So I want you to research that. Maybe I'll talk about it in the next class. So a hint is because the focal length of a concave lens is negative. Why? Or let me tell you the uh, basic logic which you can explore. So when light goes like this in a concave lens, right? So when light is incident like this, it diverges. So if you trace it back, the focus, you know, is going to be somewhere here, right? So the focus of the concave lens is going to be somewhere here on the left side of the lens. And that means this focal length that we are trying to measure, right? So the focal length we are trying to measure this side, right? So this is our focal length from the focus to the uh, optical center. So that's basically on the negative X axis by sign convention. So concave lens, because the focus is on the left side, the concave lens has negative power and convex lens, the focus is on the right side. So by sign convention, it has positive focal length. So, and in the reciprocal, the sign doesn't change, right? So it basically depends on the sign of the focal length. So very good guys. So you can remember it in a simple way, convex lens, positive power, concave lens, negative power. And the reason also I've explained to you because of the sign convention for the focal length. So very good guys. So I see a lot of you have corrected your answer. So the numerically four diopter is correct, but it has to have the correct sign because you know the doctors give you a plus or a minus power. So the right answer is minus 4D, minus 4 diopter. Excellent, clear? And guys, remember this important tip, you can use one by focal length in meter if it's given in meter. Otherwise, this convenient formula, 100 by F in centimeters. Okay, guys, superb. Now let's go ahead and try this question. When light is incident towards the optical center of the lens below, where does the refracted ray go? So what do you guys think? So come on, try this question, guys. So it's awesome to see a lot of answers here. So I'm uh, really uh, saying that a lot of you are being highly interactive. And guys, please hit the like button and share it out with your friends. So go ahead and try that. Okay. And I'll uh, fix, you know, my uh, tablet marker issue because I think some of the drawings uh, while uh, drawing the ray diagrams, which I've not had this issue in the previous live class, I'm seeing some issue today. So don't worry, I'll fix it in uh, tomorrow's live class. It's due to the screen resolution. So go ahead and try this question, guys, because then I'll be able to show you the diagrams in a more cleaner way, okay? Which you've seen in the previous classes. So when light is incident towards the optical center of the lens below, where does the refracted ray go, okay? So here you can see, what do we have here, guys? So you can see here, we have a convex lens, right? So this is a convex lens. And this is uh, the ray is being directed towards the optical center, right? This can you see? This is the optical center of the lens. So where should the this ray of light go, guys? So what do you think? So where is it going to go? Okay, excellent. Very good. I see a lot of you got the right answer. This ray of light is basically going to go straight, okay? Because what is the rule? The rule is that when the ray of light is directed towards the optical center, right? So when it's towards the optical center, which is the center of the lens, okay, the ray basically goes undeviated. So the light ray goes, so when it's directed towards the optical center of the lens, uh, the light ray basically goes, the light ray goes undeviated. So what does that mean? So the light ray goes undeviated means it's just going to go straight. Okay. So this ray of light is basically going to go uh, straight here like this. Right. So it's just going to go straight. So very good. It doesn't have any deviation. So you guys got the answer correct. So the right answer is basically going to be option D. Excellent guys. So this is an interesting part. This is a special case when the ray of light is going towards the center of the lens. Okay, so when it's going towards the center of the concave lens, it just basically goes straight. Okay, right? Very good. Any doubt about that? So that's uh, pretty simple, right guys? Okay, and let's take a look at this interesting question. 
a fish in a lake is looking at a tree on the edge of the lake. How does the tree appear to the fish? Is it going to be shorter, same size, taller or none of these? So what do you guys think? So fish in a lake is looking at a tree on the edge of the lake. How does the tree appear to the fish? So what do you guys think here? Okay, so good. I'm seeing some answers here. So the tree, uh, the fish is looking at the tree guys, so, right? So what do you think is going to happen here? So basically here, we need to consider the rays of light from the top of the object. So which is the tree, right? So we need to look at the rays from the top here, right? So we need to look at the rays from here, right guys? And so if you think about this ray, so the ray of light is just going to go straight like this. And when it hits the uh, this lake, right, it's going to basically bend towards the normal, right? Because it's going from rarer to denser right guys so it's going to bend towards the normal right and let's draw another ray here so let's really understand this so let's draw our second ray here so we can say a second ray goes something like this right and again it's going to bend towards the normal and again guys please excuse my rough drawings because of the uh, pen uh, tablet issue but i'm just trying to explain you here so can you see what is the uh, one important thing guys we've taken the rays of light from the tree because the fish is looking at the tree. The, uh, the fish is looking at the tree, so the rays of light, the object is our tree. It's the rays of light should not be taken from the fish. Okay, guys? So this is where our rays of light are coming. Now, if you trace back these rays, right? So if you go ahead and trace back the rays here, right? So we're gonna trace back this ray. Okay, again, uh, the marking is not very accurate here. So let's take a look, let me try that again. Okay, so if we trace back the rays here, so this ray, we can trace it back, you know, uh, just excuse my drawing, so it's going to go right up there. So we are tracing back that ray, right, uh, from here. And similarly, we're going to trace back this ray of light. Okay, so I'm violating all the rules of light here because it should be going in a straight line. So that's a rough way, right? So look here, so that's going to be the image of the tree, right? So the tree is going to look something like that to the fish, right guys? So do you see that? So that's gonna be our tree here, okay? Excellent guys, superb. So this is a very interesting question. Normally, what do you think when you are standing outside a pool and looking at something inside, it appears shallow to you, right? So if you put a coin in the pool or if there's a fish in the pool, it'll appear closer or a pool appears shallower. But when you're the fish, right? Or if you're the diver, right? and you're looking at something outside, the effect is the opposite, okay? And maybe in the next class, I'll show you a better and cleaner diagram, but I hope you guys got this interesting question, right? So you got the point here that in this case, the uh, option is gonna be, the tree is gonna appear taller. Why? Again, guys, focus here, what happened? So please understand this important concept. This is a very favorite question for refraction of light. So what's happening here? We are taking the rays of light from the top of the object and so this ray of light is coming uh, is traveling through air and when it enters water it's bending towards the normal so guys follow me so i'm draw, uh, going over the first ray so it's going from the tree and it's hitting the water and it's bending towards the water okay so if i trace back this ray it's going to be somewhere here now similarly if you take the second ray which is here so again we're going to take that ray passing through air and now it's going from again rarer to denser. So when it enters water, it's bending towards the normal. So we are gonna trace back this ray like this. So again, the line should be perfectly straight. So excuse my drawing. So it's gonna trace something here. And can you see it's meeting higher than the tree, right? So this is happening due to reflection of light, clear? So very good guys, excellent. The answer is gonna be, it appears taller, clear? So this is a very interesting question for you. And I have one more question for you to solve. A lens has a power of plus two diopter. So guys, remember what I told you about the positive and negative sign today for power of a lens. So the lens power is given as plus two diopter. You need to tell me what is the type of lens and what is the focal length of the lens. So remember to use the focal length formula to calculate it. And I'm not going to discuss the answer here, guys. So do write your answer in the comments below. 
and I look forward to reading your answers and I promise to reply to them as soon as possible. So it's great to see a lot of you writing the answers immediately after the live class and I want to see more and more answers, okay? Not just from a few people, but all of you. And guys, if you haven't hit the like button, hit it right now and please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Manocha Academy and hit on the, click the notification bell so that you don't miss out on these live classes which we are having during this uh, lockdown time on physics, chemistry and maths. So guys, we'll keep on uh, taking more classes on physics, chemistry and mathematics. So, and usually the classes are at 8 p.m. So please hit the like button right now and share it out with your friends and uh, go and try this homework question, uh, which is a lens has a power of plus two diopter. What is the type of lens? So basically, is it concave or convex lens? And what is the focal length of the lens? Find, uh, find it out. Very good. I see some answers in the chat, but I'm not going to give out the answers here because I want everybody, everybody here to try and or if you're watching this session after uh, the live session, you're watching the recorded, do put your answer in the comments and I promise to reply to it. And guys, do check out our website, manochaacademy.com. We have these awesome courses for you and we have big discounts going on. So do check it out for physics and chemistry. And soon we'll be launching the maths courses also. We have interactive videos. You can attend more special live classes there, quizzes and questions and get direct replies from me right so hope you enjoyed the session and sorry guys once again for that uh, bit of a writing issue that i had with the tablet i'll get it fixed it was just a resolution problem uh, which i couldn't adjust during the live class so hope you enjoyed this class and you found it useful and guys uh, please uh, give your feedback on what topics you'd like covered hit the like button right now so what topics you want in these live classes I may not be able to take each and everybody's request, but we can go for whichever has the most votes, like somebody saying class 10 gravitation, okay, or what else you guys want, uh, go ahead and put it in the comments below so that I can read the comments. And it's really awesome to read everybody's uh, feedback. So thanks a lot, everyone, for your love and support. Uh, we want the Manocha Academy family to grow and we want more people there. So please share it out with your friends and hope you enjoyed these interesting questions on reflection and refraction. Okay, some people want on metals and non-metals and your maths class, electricity, great guys. It's awesome to see a lot of um, your feedback right here, uh, but uh, please put it also in the comments, okay? So I look forward to reading your comments and I'll try to take some more uh, topics in the coming weeks, okay? So we'll have classes at 8 p.m. physics, chemistry, maths, and uh, do uh, come and join us in the next class. So hope you enjoyed it and guys thanks a lot for uh, watching uh, please keep studying and learning i know this is a difficult time for everybody during the lockdown but guys stay motivated stay focused uh, make a good schedule you know keep studying and also keep some time for relaxation and uh, you know uh, just balance it out okay so make sure you're uh, leading a balanced uh, uh, way of life right you're doing your studies you're enjoying so that you don't have all these uh, topics piled up for you all right guys so keep studying and learning and stay safe everyone thanks a lot for joining i really enjoyed the interactive session take care guys bye bye see you in the next live class bye